Hello and welcome to Leo Seisei's Pantheon, a fortnightly podcast with me, your host, Leo Seisei's. And please don't forget to like and subscribe. Apologies for this podcast being late. I seem to be juggling a million and one things at the moment. Uh, today I'm joined by co-host Sebastian to discuss the recent reveal of the Shenmue 1 and 2 remastered trailer. Uh, Shenmue originally came out on the Sega Dreamcast in the late 1990s, so it has been almost two decades since the original game's release. But this is also the first time it will be truly accessible to a much wider audience. Yeah, so I just thought it would be a good idea. It holds a very special place in both of our hearts. Yeah, yeah. you too, right? I um, I like to watch that trailer again. Not now, of course, but... I actually feel more excited about them coming out than the third one, funnily enough. Mm, yeah, because I feel like, well, sort of deprived of, of them for so long. Um, Dreamcast had a lot of problems, so obviously you couldn't actually physically play the first one. People love the Dreamcast still, but for me, I think I had three, three actual consoles throughout the time. And they were all broken. The laser yeah, just very very quickly. Very heavily flawed. I, I don't know if that's actually... Because I've had friends who've had them as well, and they've broken. So it must be like a, a manufacturing fault. But you would have thought that they would have recognised this earlier. Well, and then that was their last console. Released it. I mean, how long was it on the market for? Mm, I'm not sure, but it must have been about three years. It just went onto this forum. I mean, obviously it came out in between the time when the PlayStation 1 had come out and then the Dreamcast, and then a few years later the PlayStation 2, which obviously took the mainstream by storm, and it just it just couldn't compete. Although it was technically more powerful than the PlayStation 2, I think. On this forum that I'm reading here, I've got somebody inquiring whether they should uh, buy a Dreamcast. Mm. Uh, th- this is from 2009. Well, this actually, no, this dates back as early as 2004. Some of these comments. So one of the comments says, Well, at least in my opinion, the Dreamcast feels cheap. Everything from the controls down to the console itself feels cheap. Also, if the Dreamcast... (coughs) Also, if you get the Dreamcast and it sounds like a... (laughs) Also, if you get a Dreamcast and it sounds like a small jet fighter taking off, that's normal. This drive is just a bit noisy. And with all that being said, it does work. It's just not very reliable as such. But the disk drive does... (coughs) Then this drive is less that you know what I should have listened in school, and that's why I can't read. Okay. Well, you put on a good voice, and I think we get the impression um, it was a pretty, it was a pretty shit console in terms of reliability, at least in my experience. But you're right. That was a problem with Shenmue is that you couldn't actually play it because you needed no. the Dreamcast. The second one came out on the Xbox, um, but. You could never play the first game until now. You've never actually yeah, played well, the first game. Yeah, well, it No, no, I haven't, not properly. But I played the second one twice. Please. It's a very, very, very unique feeling it gives me. What do you think about it stands out in terms of... Okay, so there's been... there's Obviously, there's tons of video games. But Shenmue always stands out as particularly different. For you, what do you think it is? I think because it's um, it takes its time. You can do such boring stuff on the game, but somehow because of how eccentric the characters are and how they look and how they speak and how bad the voice acting is, it all makes it so much more sort of enjoyable. Like you could go and like pinball machines, for instance. Mm. I think you could. I can't remember, but maybe that was the first one. Or like, just go to the docks and talk to people. Just talking to people in general, like interacting with um, the other people in the environments was um, just always a uh, delicious uh, thrill. 
one. I think that was a big part of it for me is the actual communication with all the characters, and there was so many of them, and you could engage in meaningless dialogue. Um, not every character was just part of the narrative. <laughs> well, um, the conversations were quite to the point. So, for instance, if you asked a question, it wasn't like in real life. Do you um, do you know where this place is, or where can I find this shop, or whatever? So it was so um, tunnel tunnel vision. Mm. Um, but <laughs> but I think um, I think that's part of its charm and. Yeah, having those such like mundane conversations with people, but because it sounded so terrible, and it does sound rubbish, like, and everyone kind of acknowledges that. You mean the um, voice acting? The voice acting is rubbish. It, it is. It is atrocious. It's atrociously bad. It's really bad. I wonder what the Japanese voice acting is like relative to it, because we're, we're obviously we, we can only understand the English dialogue. <laughs> and it really is shit. You know, I can the willing shoe. <laughs> <laughs> but you're right, it's part of its charm, definitely. I think if it wasn't there, it'd be a very different game. If the voice acting was good, not that it would take away from how good the game is, mm. but, um, yeah, it feels like it's a part of it, and it's a part of, like, the bigger picture as to why you like it so much, for me anyway. I mean, I, I play a lot of video games that I have done over the years, obviously, but I usually, if I'm playing a game, I usually get into about an hour maximum and I begin to feel bored and sort of twitchy, like I, I, I want to switch it off and engage with the real world. I'm not somebody who can just sit down and play a game and get lost in it because I, I, I'm always aware that I'm playing a game. For me, Shenmue is probably one of the only games where I don't get that feeling. I feel fully immersed in it. And, and, and I don't think it's just about the fact that you can engage in mundane things, like you said. I think it's the sheer amount of detail in trying to reproduce the Japanese and Chinese culture. Because obviously the second one's set in China. Oh, it does, it does feel very authentic. Very authentic. But, um, uh, yeah, and I think that's an, another part of it, actually. I feel like I'm genuinely in these environments. Yeah. Even even if they are, like, you know, it doesn't look particularly realistic. But Well, that's just because of the graphical capability at the time. Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. I mean, the, what they were attempting to do I, at I, the time, yeah. it looked great. I think because um, the, the, way, the way the second one starts as well is him getting off the... Um, off of the cruise ship, yeah. Well, no, it's not even a cruise ship, is it? It's just the, it's just the ship. Yeah. Um, it, it's like, um, getting off, and you're going on holiday, kind of thing. So you, you sort of. It, well, it, it throws you into it immediately, doesn't it? It doesn't have a yeah. cut scene where it's sort of getting, walking through the pier and sort of, it starts at a location specifically for the story. It just yeah. throws you into it. As soon as you get off the boat, that's it. Play the game. Yeah, and I think that's um, really nice because you're on the whole journey with him right from the start. Yeah. And you've got you've got to like find a place to stay and you've only got so much cash. Yeah. And, um, well, I mean, he gets robbed within the first 15 minutes of getting off the boat. But, but even stuff like that, like it adds... Um, Depth. Yeah, exactly. Because you'd think it was an obstacle enough trying to find somewhere and and find your way around. Um, because you know the the environments are pretty vast. But yeah, like it's, it's, there's, there's always little obstacles and puzzles and just stuff to do. Yeah, and it's it's sort of real life stuff in the middle of this really. Um, it's quite an alluring story. It pulls you in. It's it's interesting. It's well, a it's, my, it's a mystery, it's, isn't it? Like it, it pulls you in. It's like a big mystery, and yeah, obviously exactly. you're emotively um, engaged in it because you're trying to find out the people who killed his father. Well, um, yeah, it's definitely full of intrigue. Mm. Um, I I I kind of because we're talking about obviously how sort of 
real it feels and how you feel like you are actually there. But I, I really like how it combines that, but also with... Because um, it is very dramatic at the same time. Yeah, but it's not... Or it, it's not indulgent in its drama, I don't think. It's it's quite subtle. It's like you said earlier, the characters are ridiculous. So um, they're almost comic booky. The main characters, yeah. Uh, the villa, the villains, for example, you'll get really. They are they're like comic book characters, comic book villains, but men with mohawks and vests and things like that, and that's all they wear and um, waistcoats. Yeah, well, even some of them do have semi supernatural powers. Like on the first one, I think his name's Ch- like Chai, and he's he meant to be like this really fast ninja, and he has like motion blur behind him, um, and his characters like that that. They are. They sit amongst a whole sea of other characters, which are just like pedestrians on the street, which are not like comic book characters at all. In fact, they they are that they're literally made out to just be the average Joe. Um, but then, yeah, you've got all the. It's it's just very full. There's a lot. There's a lot to it. That that that's one of the reasons that I feel that I can play the game without getting bored is because it feels immersive and you feel like you're actually engaging with people yeah I think one of the only other games that I can think where I feel like that is probably Broken Sword Mm, I agree and and I would say that for me the two games are quite similar in that respect in the, the, the essence that they deliver I don't think any other game, even Grand Theft Auto, which obviously that has pedestrians walking around, it's a very alive city um, and environment, but it just doesn't feel the same. Yeah, Grand Theft Auto is, it's not, well, it's not innocent at all. I think that's possibly what it is. I think that's why I like Shenmue so much, because it feels so innocent, and Broken Sword also feels so innocent. There's, a, um, there's more of a humanness to them. You empathise with the characters more. I don't think anyone in Grand Theft Auto you really like, do you? No. No, they're all, yeah. And I don't think you're particularly supposed to either. No. Um, but despite the fact that they're, like, really, really fun games, and even, like, the storylines, you can get really engaged in them. Sure. Like, I, I could play those for hours on end if I got really, really into it. But, um, which I have done as well. Mm. Um but yeah, with Shenmue it's different. Like I think the music helps as well. Um, it's like it's like a a cocktail of experience. Yeah, exactly. Did you know that Shenmue was originally going to be on the Sega Saturn? No, never even played the Sega Saturn. It obviously it was like around during the early days of the PlayStation One. Do you know um, Virtua Fighter? No. It was, oh. kind of, it was kind of like just, Tekken, just... but it was Sega's Tekken. I actually think it was the first 3D fighting game um, that used proper 3D models. Well, it was going to be a Virtua Fighter role-playing game. So I'm just looking at these um, Sega Saturn images. They're interesting. It looks a lot different. Yeah. I mean, obviously it looks like the same game, but... Do you know what's also interesting? I, if you look at I them, saw... you can see there's characters and screenshots from the second game. So, the first and second Shenmue games, they must have originally been either one whole thing or they planned to have the two on the Sega Saturn. So, they, their development I, goes years back. I've never checked it out. I can now. I, I'd always assumed that they would they were developed roughly at the same time anyway. Mm. Because they seem like there's there's no particularly tonal or technical jump between the the two. So oh, not at all. The first one was released in 1999. Oh, the second one was actually released a couple of years later. But yeah, 2001, wasn't it? But in terms of technical jumps, you're right. There, there was no difference between the two. I don't think. They run on exactly the same engine. Which I also think is nice. Yeah. Isn't that... 
with that and Broken Sword, and th there are going to be others that just from the top of my head. Um, they are two games that do have a very, very consistent, um, you know, engine, look, feel, colours are very similar. Yeah. I think well, it's not the same. Broken Sword 1 I mean, sort of Broken Sword 2 are very similar. So I'm just sort of thinking in comparison to, say, Sonic 1 and Sonic 2. Like, they look visually quite different. Yeah, but the engine's practically the same still. If you think about the original Sonic trilogy, they still pretty much run on the same engine. There are only very, very slight differences. <clears throat> yeah. but, but I do like, I think in, in my um, video game essay that I did last year, that I, I mentioned that, that what I like about a lot of old games was the fact that the sequels had a consistency to them. They felt like a, a sequel because they didn't tweak or change the engine too much. Um, so it felt like part of a, a series. There's a natural progression to them. Whereas now yeah. with games, there's a tendency for when the new game comes out, they completely overhaul the engine to the point where it does feel like you're playing a different game sometimes. Yeah, and I'm trying to think of the last game that did, well, did feel more consistent with its predecessor. I suppose the, the Tomb Raider games are quite consistent in that respect, but anyway, I digress. Or the original ones. Mm. Yeah, they were. Again, there was only very subtle differences between. Actually, now I'm thinking of loads. Crash Bandicoot, Spyro, Abe, but yeah. we're not talking about that. But so again, what do you think? Sort of dissecting what makes a game good. Um, I don't play a lot of modern games, though. I've got to be honest. I don't really know what I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Too cool for that, aren't you? <laughs> I don't. I don't play any games. You know what? The only game that I have. No, actually, that's not true. I was going to say the only game that I have is Grand Theft Auto Four, but I do. I, I also have um, Metal Gear Solid Four. I just go for the fours. Never mind the. Yeah. Never mind the predecessors or the sequels. Doesn't matter. Um, talking about modern games and also going back to what you were saying earlier about not being able to sit down for too long because of your fat ass. I tried to play um, Metal, Metal Gear Solid uh, 4 um, and I, I did get quite into it. Um, but I, I, I will admit, I could only probably play it for, um, for an hour and then I would have to turn it off. I wasn't sure if it was boredom despite the fact that I did feel quite engaged. Like, I really wanted to know what happened next, but yeah, because Metal Gear Solid can be quite sane, you can't it? Metal Gear Solid always felt very isolated as well. I think there's something about the social aspect of games like Shenmue and Broken Sword that, for me, definitely kept me wanting to play. Um, I It's probably something to do with my psychology. I, for all the claims I make fun. about being an introvert, I actually really thrive on socialising with people, which is probably why I became a council, let's be honest. Well, um, these games are a huge comfort. Mm. Predominantly for those reasons. Mm. But you mentioned the music as well, and I think the music in Shenmue is a huge part of that experience. It Again, mm -hmm. the music's very authentic. It's not subtle either. It's quite, like, it is, it's quite in your face, and it's quite... It's quite loud and it's quite crass, but um, I don't know. I, I kind of like it. I don't think there's anything crass about the music on Shenmue. Well, no, no, not crass, but it's it's very sort of like there's nothing subtle about it. Now I just googled what crass meant, and it actually means showing no intelligence, which is exactly how I describe the Shenmue music. <laughs> Absolutely no intelligence at all, or sensitivity. Yeah, I think you used wrong words in the wrong context. Right, what do you think the third one's going to be about? Hmm. See, I, I, I suspect, I don't know about you, but his whole mission has been to get revenge on Landy for killing his dad. 
that there's going to be there will be some kind of face off with Landy, I guess. But I, I actually imagine that they're going to go like a Lion King route or something. He'll confront Landy and he'll have the opportunity to kill him, but he won't do it. Mm. He, he, that, and that will be his defining moment that I'm different to you because I don't murder in order you know what? to take what I want. I think that's exactly what will happen because he's on this journey right now with. Um... Oh, Shen, Shen Hua. Yeah. No, I think you're right. So I think, I think that's exactly what will happen. Um, and I think that because that. Well, it's sort of, is it the last quarter? It's not even that really, is it? Like the last probably eighth of the of Shenmue 2 mm. it's a time spent with her yeah and that probably continue on into the next one I mean the, the last eighth like you say of the second game had absolutely no action or communication other than with her at all you're practically just walking through a very long forest for a long time but yeah. she, she's talking to you about her um, beliefs about almost like pagan beliefs about nature and um, she's very sort of in tune with the environment and I suspect that it's could it, it began to introduce a mystical element towards the end because he finds the cave and that's where the two the dragon and the phoenix mirror were meant to be forged so there's, there's going to be some magical element to it but there's something around her archaic um, peaceful way of life that's going to be the taming of Rio. Yeah. Yeah, well, uh, he's, I mean, he's, how old is he supposed to be? I think he's, he's 18, he's, isn't he? Yeah, he's pretty young. Yeah. Um, but that's 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 how they sort of portray his character, isn't it? He's he's like a um, he's like an impatient, an impatient youth, as it were. Um, yeah. And yeah, he just wants to get revenge, and that's all he's out for. He's out for he's out for he's out for blood. Which is understandable because he watched his dad murdered in front of his eyes. Yeah, you can understand um, that. But it's um, he's. He's been on a journey through two whole games, mm. and I think it was only at that point, really, when he started to spend time with her um, in a peaceful environment, having the concept of peace being spoken to him and her worldview, that then he perhaps, I think it will take more time, but he will come to realise that the path that he is seeking is not, not the most desired, or perhaps he will go the complete opposite direction and he will become Landy's successor. Who knows? That'd be interesting. Yeah, but the idealist in me, I guess, wants him not to do that kind of thing. I am, and I don't actually think he will. I think that we're all rooting for Rio to to develop and become the person that he, he needs to be in order to... The thing is, right, he's obviously... The, the irony is that because annoyed. of his dad's death, He's obviously gone on this huge journey and he's meeting new people and he's, he's made a hell of a lot of friendships and, and enemies along the way. But all the relationships and experiences that he's been through, he wouldn't have done that if it wasn't for Landy killing his dad. Very true. So, so what he's saying is, is that Landy is actually the hero of the story. Indirectly. An interesting twist. Mm. Perhaps Landy is um, his father. No, if that if that happened, if that happened, that'd be very um, well, not really annoying. Just like, oh, where did this come from then? Yeah, it's funny because I swear I've heard that rumor before. You know, though, seriously. It's, well, it's a cliche, isn't it? And him, in a way, him becoming. Landy's successor is also a cliche. But, uh, yeah, cliches are cliches. I mean, they're good fun. I, I think the story is actually quite archetypical, though. Um, I mean, if you look at the, the symbolism of it all, you've got Landy, which 
I think I've mentioned this before to you, but like you've got the Egyptian mythology and it, it follows through in a lot of threads. So like the Hamlet and even the Lion King, like I mentioned those two earlier, where you've got like uh, the positive masculine character um, who gets murdered by the negative masculine character and then his son goes on a journey to reclaim. But in order to make sure that he doesn't turn over to the dark side, and it's it's Star Wars as well. It's the same archetypes. Oh, I, I, yeah, I was going to slip yeah. that in, but um, but yeah. the, the, there's there's a positive feminine force that has an influence on that the the hero character mm. to to prevent him from entering into the dark side. Because um, Rio could easily become like Landy, he could become a murderer. But as he trains in the martial arts, it's all about keeping his emotions under control and not allowing them to get the better of him so he uses it to have power over people the irony is that he's he wants to ultimately use it to have power over landy and i think the ultimate lesson he will learn is to stop his impulse for revenge to kill landy now just let me just talk about Landy for a minute. So you know I haven't played the first one properly. Hmm. How much do we know about Landy? It's been a long time since I played it. That's why I'm looking forward to playing it again so much. Um, okay. Not a lot. There's a photo of him and his dad together. And that's... So they had a relationship in the past. Right, so... Um, a lot of uh, people and film critics and, well, just critics of media uh, talk about how in horror and in villains, um, knowing less is more. Mm. Um, you know, it works for the Joker, for instance, in The Dark Knight. Knowing less makes him more threatening. Yeah. But with Landry, I actually want to know more. Like, I want to know where he came from. Like, I don't think it, it should be kept a mystery. Do you, do you not think that you'll be disappointed when you do find out then? Um, because I think so so little is known about him. Yeah. I feel like I want to know not not everything, but what's important. Like, why did he kill his father? Obviously, that, that's a that's a big big point. Um. What you know? What was his upbringing like? Why is he a part of this organization? Why does he surround himself with these um, horrible people? Mm. And, what, and why? And why is he evil? Basically, yeah. and what made him? What made him go bad? My fear is though that when they begin to answer these questions, that the power of the games wears off. It it, it was pretty legendary. I mean, it's been well over a decade since the second one obviously came out and well it's been nearly two decades and to have, to finally be releasing a third game i feel cautious about it not that i don't have faith in the developers but i've just known how i felt about other things in the past when there's that big gap and the gap almost becomes legendary because you everyone wants to know what happened in it creates this cult fan base where people are yearning for more but then when it actually happens it will never live up to the myth of not knowing for so long do, do you see what i mean yeah i do um and this in in this instance i don't have any particular expectations as to what you know landy's origin story could be but just talking about how you know everybody's sort of got all it's built you know you're talking about how it's built this sort of legend yeah and people want all these unanswered questions having them not answered at all is probably more frustrating for me i mean it can it can it can work don't get me wrong i think it's important to keep things just a little bit ambiguous mm. but um honestly i feel like at the moment it is done to death with things like um i don't know if you watched the new twin peaks but um yeah it wasn't good i haven't seen it no. it, was, 
it was it was uh, I think twenty odd episodes. It went on for a long time. Did you feel like it ruined it then? Um, yeah, it's really mm. annoying. I don't I don't want to dislike it, and I would watch it again. But the only way I can describe it is I've never sat there watching nothing before. Mm. Nothing happens. And people, David Lynch apologists get really upset. I know I'm digressing, I'll come off the topic in a minute. No, it's fine, you're on the uh, team. David Lynch apologists get really, really frustrated and angry with you if you say that um, you think it was rubbish. <laughs> because right. they say that he, oh yeah, but you, you just think, you, you, not sophisticated enough to understand, are you? Yeah. Not uh, all your popcorn munching Hollywood bullshit. So you're just too thick for it, aren't you? It's like the same people old get very protective about nonsense. things, don't they? About what they've held on to for a long time, and it almost it creates a lot of bias. But it can make people blind to the fact that okay, this actually might not be very good objectively. Yeah, exactly. Mm. That is my fear for Shenmue Three that it it loses something in the process of it being released. And I I, mean, I hope not. I, I, I hope that it's going to be a fantastic game. Um, but I enter into it with caution. I think as long as the stupid characters, the gameplay, and the sort of um, the pleasantries that come with the game mm. are present, it will be a success in my eyes. I mean, the, the original ones, obviously they had the martial art and fighting element, but it wasn't in your face or excessive or trying to be cool in any way. And that's the thing with video games, like historically, is that they've always tried to be cool. And yeah. if there was a martial arts element in video games, it would always be really cheesy and appealing to, to geeks, basically, who like want them to feel a bit more macho and masculine. <clears throat> yeah, and Shenmue didn't feel like that because it, they're not. Well, martial art, yeah, <laughs> but martial arts that's, is that's part just of, a little big buffer in there. Martial arts is part of um, Japanese culture. Exactly. It, it's so I feel like it's taken seriously in these. Games. Yeah, absolutely, and that's the authenticity that really comes through in those games. Um, it, it felt, it feels playing them like you're going on holiday to Japan. That's what I was trying to say earlier. Yeah. From the vote from the get go, at the very start of the game, you feel like, well, yeah, obviously in the second one it is Hong Kong, but yeah, yeah it's like it, a holiday uh, in Asia, though. It's pulling, it's pulling yourself out of what you know. Yeah. And be thrown into a whole other world. Um. But it feels, but. That is accessible, and yeah. potentially you could do this yourself because you know, like obviously, it is escapism, and like anything that's games, television, or film, it is escapism effectively. Um, but, but not, yeah, this feels it feels it feels real. Not many games could <laughs> encourage you to want to actually visit the country that you're playing them in. Exactly. Um, yeah, like, I, w w one of the things that I do think when I am running or walking down the streets in Shenmue is, oh, uh, I mean, this, this particular street probably doesn't exist, but it's like, oh, I really want to walk down this bit. Yeah. Or I would go to this street or this lane or... And experience um, this for real. Yeah. Yeah. But at the same time, it doesn't really matter if you don't which you can't because it's not real because the game feeds it to you so well mm. that you can just appreciate it and enjoy it in its in that form. Yeah. There's another point that I wanted to make and I've forgotten now. Oh, that was just on the uh, topic of things that get left and never released because obviously, um, I mentioned earlier, it's been nearly two decades since Shenmue 2 came out. Did you ever play the Half-Life games? No, I would like to. I've seen, uh, I definitely seen bits of the second one. The Half-Life game, particularly Half-Life Two, is just 
that that's another game which is just beautiful. I've, I've only seen snippets, but that, that is something that I thought when I was watching it. The first one's really good, but the second one is just phenomenal, I think. And they never released the third one. Is Portal a part of the same world? Part of the same universe, yeah. Yeah. Mm. Okay. Which is really frustrating, because uh, well, they, they link yeah, up yeah. to each other in very subtle yeah. ways. What was it that they released on? Was it the... Orange... No, what was it called? Yeah, the Orange Box. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, well, it's funny because isn't half isn't Half Life sort of um, is it horror? It's got horror elements. It's more science fiction. <clears throat> There's bits of Half Life that are horror. I have really vague memories. Like I remember you playing the first one um, yeah. and thinking that. It, thinking as a child that this is just like a horror game um, I have like the same sort of vague memories as that as I do like Dino Crisis you know, no, I don't no. really remember much I just remember there being blood and it being quite it, it can get quite gory and obviously there's quite a lot of death in it but no I wouldn't say it was a horror game but the first one um, sorry no the second one it um, yeah but it I remember thinking, like, really enjoying the environments. I mean, I, I can't take any credit for playing it because I haven't, but... Um... The, the, the environments on the second one in particular are, are really detailed and really immersive. And funnily enough, it's, it's a similar thing where um, you can communicate with people who you come across, like anyone that you come across you can talk to, and they could just be random people on the streets. And yeah. it, it's it's that element in games which has always attracted me and wanted me. It just makes it more immersive. Um, Fallout did for, does Fallout um, do that for you? I've never played Fallout. Is that is, uh, it, is that like it? Then? Um, yeah. I mean, just talking about Half Life um, gave me sort of similar similar sort of vibes. Yeah. But nothing like Shenmue. Shenmue gets away with quite a lot as well because a lot of the Shenmue game is pretty boring. Not much happens, but this there's again, a lot of monotony in it where you're just kind of going back and forth trying to earn money to get to the next bit. This mirrors what I was saying earlier, though. I, um, it's it's just very pleasant to do such mundane things. Yeah, it somehow makes it so. That's what I mean about it being realistic as well. Yeah. I mean, a lot, of, a lot of people may complain that, like, there's no progression. Oh, it's just slow. Oh, nothing happens, do you know what I mean? That's but, why I don't, can't imagine that Shenmue will ever appeal to a massive audience. It's too but slow. But that, that's something that I think... What? Because you talk about concerns of the third one. Yeah. What if they let go of that element? That's one and of my much, concerns, yeah. And it's a much shorter game as a result. Shorter, faster, more obnoxious, more fighting orientated, more action yeah. orientated, and less mystery and less communication. I really yeah. hope they don't go that route, but I, I fear so, because that's where the money will be. They better get shit voice actors. <laughs> they bet. They better be. They better be shit. They better do a shit job. <laughs> because, Infamous because live I, I, honestly, if I say I don't have any expectations, but that is probably one of them. If I do have any, yeah, it's going to be better. It's inevitably going to be better than the first. Two. Oh, I don't know. You're going to have to ask someone else. It, it goes up to everyone. It's the same line. It just goes, "Excuse me," and then some old bloke turns around and goes, mm, "You call." <laughs> <laughs> and they use the same voice clip later on an old woman that looks like a nun <laughs> like a bloke's voice uh, this is actually a, it's definitely a thing on the internet the voice acting because it, it comes down on like drop down menus it's it's probably about as infamous in video game lore as uh, Barry Burton <laughs> Do you know the Dew Barber and Hair Salon? It 
doesn't look like you need a haircut just yet. <laughs> That's right, but I was thinking about changing my hairstyle. <laughs> Is that so? Well, I suppose that wouldn't be a bad idea. I'll give you some extra allowance money tomorrow. Jesus. No thanks, Ine-san. I have enough. Well, if you say so. Do you know a man who goes by the name Charlie? Wears a black leather jacket, sunglasses, and has a tattoo on his arm. Yeah, mean looking guy. She sounded incredibly depressed the first person. Oh, I mean, you don't know like you need one. Is she, is she basically insulting him, saying his hair looks shit? No, she's saying it looks fine. Oh, right, okay. No, I don't think so. It's hard to decipher what her mood might be. <laughs> um, she's taking pills all morning. But also her life is shit as a result of taking pills. It's dark stuff. You know, they don't mention this in the game, but the subtleties are there. Check this out. Uh, 21 seconds long. Shenmue 2 in a nutshell is the title. Okay. Oh, it 10 years ago. Welcome! Welcome to Hong Kong! Looking for fun? Do you need a guy? Are you alone, boy? You need a place to stay. <laughs> need a dinner? It'll be cheap. Hey, Hansel! Let me take your photo! <laughs> uh, you're alone, boy. You need a place to stay. <laughs> <laughs> There's so many weird characters in it. <laughs> what I love on the first one, you've never played this bit, but um, it goes around. It goes around the red light district asking people if they've seen sailors. Oh, great. Well, no, actually, i just come across this video. Shemu, Sh Sailors Part 1. Do you want to come find me? I'll look for some. Thank you very much. Good luck. Um, hi. What can I get for you? Do you know of a place where sailors hang out? Sailors? I see them at night. We <laughs> call the <laughs> I see. All of the sailors are big, you know. Ah! Who are they thinking? <laughs> I I'd... usually see them at night. <laughs> I usually see the sailors at night. Um, did you know that they're quite big? Them sailors. Uh, I'm so quite big about them. They're something all large. Unlock <laughs> <laughs> lock and stuff. <laughs> Say they hang out at bars or some places like that. Right. Thanks. Sailors seem as like a, like a sort of big threat in that side of the world. <laughs> yeah, apparently so. The sailor, sailors were like the, the the hard blokes before they got their reputation. Um, I beg to differ, <laughs> but. <laughs> Uh, semen. Well, we'll, we'll come into time, but on that note, um, we hope that Shenmue 3 has appalling voice acting and sailors. You know, they are quite large. Um, so I look forward to that in the third one. Yeah. There being, some, you know, some large boys. Do you take boys? Um, no, and, I, and, I, and I, I do hope they answer some questions. Um, a bit of ambiguity is absolutely fine as well. My um, other fear it'll... is that it's good and they don't answer much of the story at all and then they just leave everyone hanging again because it might not do so well financially. Oh, didn't they start like crowdfunder and then they got loads of money, like way more than they wanted within the first 24 hours? 12 hours, actually. Yeah, but the reality was that, that 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 wouldn't have been enough to fund the game development. So really, they were just gauging interest. Sony has actually backed most of the development. Oh. I think. It's supposed to be coming out later this year. Hopefully, it's been we'll get... for three years, so you know, it better be worth the wait. Well, either way, if it's not very good, at least we get the first two back, which is yeah. good enough for me at this point. But, I know, think so. It, it could be absolutely phenomenal, so fingers crossed. Well, thank you for talking. Okay. Covering this week's podcast. No worries. Bye. Bye.